I'm a founding partner of Kawahara Krause Architects, a German-Japanese architect's office based in Hamburg. Today, I will show you two projects here in Hamburg that I chose because they are both projects that have a meaning, even beyond their actual value, for the city and the place where they are located. We summarize our general design approach with the sentence, how things come together. How things come together is a question that, in our opinion, Architecture has to address on very many levels, at different scales and under diverse aspects. This half sentence describes our design understanding of architecture in its complex integration into an expanded notion of context. The first project that I will show you is a temporary pavilion that we built on occasion of Hamburg Architektursommer, Hamburg's architecture triennale. For the Hamburg Architektursommer, we wanted to contribute a project that is not only from architects for architects, but addresses a broad group of people. A project that whets people's appetite for architecture, that conveys the joy and power of architecture. For our pavilion, we choose a very public site, easily accessible for everybody. Planten und Lohmen, Hamburg's most popular central park, located on the ring of the former fortification of the old city. The park Planten and Blomen connects the city center with its later extension outside the fortification and also connects River Elbe to Lake Alster, with several thousand people passing through it every day. The zoom in shows the part of Planten and Blomen that we chose as our site, a meadow in the fluid space of the vast park. The park spreads as an open space bordered by huge scale buildings on both sides. This is our first concept model, a hovering roof that doesn't stop the movement and the flowing of the space, but at the same time marks a place in this fluid space. A place to stop, to rest, to get a new perspective on a well-known park. As the project was built with the help of untrained volunteers and the site and park is not accessible to cranes or other construction machines, we aim to create a roof that consists of many small parts that are easy to transport, easy to handle, and easy to assemble. So we designed this roof structure that consists of the repetition of the ever same small module. A structure that is highly rational, but at the same time has a surprising and unexpected moment that would make people curious and attract them to come closer. As the pavilion was only a temporary structure for a short time, we chose cardboard as a construction material. As cardboard is a material that can be recycled very easily and is already made of recycled paper. We cut honeycomb cardboard panels with a single cut very efficiently into two parts, a convex and a concave part. So here you see the honeycomb cardboard panel with the cut lines for the convex and the concave part, and the slots to interlock them. The convex and concave parts are put together to form two basic modules in a reciprocal system. Just as a quick explanation, a reciprocal system is a structure where in a windmill order, each member bears on the next one. So these are the two basic modules and how they are put together. A paper tube in the middle works as a bracing for the module. Here you can see the one-to-one -one mock-up of the basic module and how the parts are interlocking. The model shows the repetition of the module. The modules are arranged in a way so that the convex parts show into one direction and the concave parts in the other direction. So convex waves on one side, and concave arches on the other side. 
The axonometric drawing shows how we set the roof on four columns on a square platform. The platform is an open space to be freely used by everyone passing through the park. An open place with a bench and a hole in the floor that also works as a bench on a different level. The repetitive structure of the roof is interrupted at one point to create a window to the sky. For us, this disturbance makes the impression of the repetition of the same module even more perceivable, an exception that strengthens the rule. The platform was rotated 45 degrees to the roof as to give the impression of the space beneath the roof continuing towards the outside and into the park. The substructure under the platform helps to lift the platform up off the ground as not to damage the grass and needs to mediate the two directions of roof and columns and the platform. The connection of the substructure of the platform to the rotated columns is solved with the help of a symbol of, of simple timber wedges. So in the fluid space of that vast park, we built the wooden platform with the four columns and with the help of volunteers who painted the honeycomb cardboard panels and interlocked the concave and convex parts to form the roof on a temporary scaffolding. Then the finished roof was lifted in a common effort of 12 strong people up to its final position. This collage of the model shows how we imagined the pavilion in a park. And this is how it looked when it was realized. Hamburg-based Japanese artist Nobuku Watabiki developed a bright color concept for our pavilion. All convex parts are yellow, all concave parts are purple. And all parts towards the outside are also yellow, regardless of whether they are concave or convex. This color concept added another layer of complexity to the pavilion. The interplay of concave and convex parts of the roof created a structure that gives different impressions, depending from which side you look at it. When you come closer, the impression changes between a strict orderly repetition and some more playful aspects. Attracting people to freely use the pavilion when and how they want it. There were some organized events taking place in the pavilion, like this Japanese tea ceremony or this international picnic. But even outside that organized program, at every time of the day, there were always people using the pavilion to do yoga or some workout, to meet friends, to talk, to play, to rest, to take a nap. A couple even put music one day and danced tango under this colorful roof while others just enjoyed the place and the architecture. So from a repetition of small and material efficient parts and with some easy operations, a complex roof structure was created that attracted people and triggered a huge variety of activities. The second project I would like to show you is a competition project for a small archaeological museum in Hamburg, which was to be planned on so-called Hopfenmarkt in the center of Hamburg. In the middle of Hopfenmarkt, Nikolai Church is located, which was heavily destroyed during the Second World War and was left in ruins with only the church tower standing. As an impressive memorial, Nikolai Church is one of the main tourist sites in Hamburg. Despite the meaning of the site, Hopfenmark today is less nice than this aerial photo might suggest. Basically, it's used as a huge parking space. So the competition opened a chance for redevelopment of this central square. Several years ago, during construction works around Hopfenmark, archaeologists found well-preserved remains of the so-called Neue Burg. Neue Burg was a huge fortification ring protecting a small medieval settlement. Here you can see a model photo from Hamburg Archaeological Museum, how archaeologists imagined this huge rampart. That settlement within the, this rampart was given up at a certain point in history, filled up with earth above it developing what today is the city of Hamburg. 
The exact position of Neuburg was not documented, leading to many speculations on the whereabouts of Hamburg's origin. So it was a bit of a sensation when some years ago, archeologists found the ramparts of Neuburg in a very good condition, buried underground of what is today Hopfenmark, expected to still form a complete ring below the city level around Nikolai Church. The competition project for the small archeological museum is to show a section of the ramparts of Neuburg in its actual location on Hopfenmark to the public. The ramparts of this fortification ring have an impressive width of about 30 meters. Instead of taking a section out of the ramparts and display it separately, separately to look at it in a museum, our design concept was to make this huge dimension physically perceivable as a walkable cut through the ramparts. So as a visitor to the underground museum, one can walk through this cut and understand the huge dimensions of the ramparts in a relation to one's body. The view upwards through the top light above the cut establishes a relationship to today's Hopfenmarkt and Nikolai Church, and thus illustrates the dense overlapping of different layers of history at this location. Already the entrance volume to the museum visualizes for visitors the descent down into deep laying layer of history. The long and narrow top light above the cot produced to the surface of Hopfenmark and visualizes the location of the ramparts in, in relation to Nikolai Church. Hopfenmark is redesigned as an urban square, opening up the visual access onto the church tower. The entrance volume to the underground museum, the long narrow top light and a small cafe are arranged as a composition of solitaires along with Nikolai Church in the center of Hopfenmarkt. A continuous paving of the surface extends the square beyond the street, supporting its perception as one single urban space that stretches between surrounding buildings. The existing trees on Hopfenmarkt are concentrated and complemented by the planting of additional trees into a dense green block in the northern part of Hopfenmarkt, creating a well-shaded green area for the public and a free access in front of Nikolai Church. Under this green roof, the cafe is located as a small pavilion. These three volumes, the entrance, the long and narrow top light above the cot, and the cafe are the new elements on the square, structuring the space and visualizing the different layers of history that densely overlap on the site. As urban furniture, those small scale volumes create an attractive public space. The entrance volume with its characteristic shape visualizes a descent down to the archeological site. On its declining roof, people can sit on the steps, enjoying the view onto the top light, signifying the ramparts below and onto the tower of Nikolai Church. The museum building is completely underground. From the entrance, a straight stairway leads visitors down, the view already onto the cut of the ramparts. Arriving underground, visitors get to the ticket counter on the right, and a small introduction anteroom on the left, which leads into the main part of the museum. The long and narrow cut through the rampart that makes visitors physically experience the enormous dimension 30 meter long ramparts. The exhibition space is located along the cut with the possibility to link the information received in the exhibition to the physical experience of walking through the cut through the ramparts in their original location. We think that this design for the archaeological museum as a compact building underground with only three volumes on the surface that create an open urban space and a shady sandy area beneath the leafy canopy of the trees would give Hopfenmark a new and strong character with a dense con within the dense context of Hamburg's urban development. Thank you very much.